everyone, today we will start the Micron build. So if you haven't seen already, I made an unboxing video of the DFH kit, for DFH Micron kits, and I'll link it in the description below in case you're interested in that. But as I said in that video, I'm using the kit parts for this build, and I will also be using the fasteners included with the kit just to see their quality, etc. I'm starting with a bunch of mods for this build already, like the pins mod, the PT100, and I'm also doing the clicky pro for this. I didn't mention this in that video, but since the clicky is the recommended pro for the Micron, that's what I'm using. But uh, these are still fairly standard mods. I have a lot more in the works. Some of them, uh, the simpler ones, I'll, some of them I'll mention in this video, but most of them uh, I'll do that after I finish the build, but there are definitely a lot of stuff in the works, so stay tuned for that. I will also make a separate video about my opinions of the DFH kit once the build is finished, just to, uh, you know, as a review of the kit essentially, just so you can have a more informed decision if you are interested in purchasing that kit. But today we will work on the microns, so let's begin after this. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is well known for their PCB manufacturing services. I use their PCB services many times in the past for multiple different projects on this channel and even before I was sponsored to do so and I was always happy with my orders so I can confidently recommend them to anyone who's looking for a PCB manufacturer for their next project. They can also manufacture flex and rigid flex PCBs, high-end PCBs designed to meet specific stricter requirements, and they also have a PCB assembly service. For more information, click the link in the description below. As you can see, the frame is assembled. I've also mounted the MGN7 rails for the Z-axis, as you can see. I had to clean these rails before mounting here, so I used the Daddy brand ultrasonic cleaner for that, and I used 99% isopropyl alcohol and uh, run that at 50 watt mode for five minutes and then lubricating them using the recommended Mobilux EP1 I think whatever the recommended one is there are two recommended versions but I think mine is EP1 yeah I use that as the lubricant and they slide pretty smoothly I'm almost done preparing the bed for the Micron I RTV glued and also applied the uh, heater, silicone heater from uh, DFH to the bed. I also use this thermal fuse. This is from my stock. This wasn't included with the kit, but um, this feels like there is a thermal fuse in here. There are some adhesive mats that include the thermal fuse in here, so maybe that this is one of those. But I decided to use my own thermal fuse, so I RTV'd that in place, and right now that's still curing. On the other side, I applied the uh, a magnet and also had to did the holes for the screws so that uh yeah so that i can actually fit the screws through uh, so yeah this is ready to be mounted on the micron uh, also you can see that i mounted the bed but this is the front of the micron and uh, if you've seen pictures of the micron this uh, might look a bit odd to you you'll notice that the extrusions aren't in this direction but they're instead in this direction this is a limitation of the kit by the FH. The current version of the Micron uses a pretty similar mounting pattern uh, to the Boron 2. So yeah, it has the extrusions in the same direction. Has four mounting holes, so you're supposed to only populate three. But uh, the bed supplied with the kit is essentially just a Boron 0 bed. So you can see the three-point mounting here. So to be able to mount this, you have to rotate the extrusions. Actually, it's just a small edit for the bed. You're supposed to use a 3D printed part like this. So this is from the Doom Cube uh, server on Discord. You can see some of that on some of the older builds like this or uh, like this. You're supposed to use a 3D printed part for the old style bed. And I wanted to also show a trick to find some old STLs because this is currently not in the Micron repository. What you need to do is go through the uh, older commits of the repository and then search for what you're looking for, find what you want, and then you know, open that previous commit and then just go to browse files and uh, you'll have your file. So in this case, it will be under frame. Uh, you can find the front bed mount here. So just a little trick for this. This will be mounted in the next episode because well, I'm just adding this while I'm editing the video, but I'll fix that. I actually, because I knew about this, I actually designed the adapter plate that uh, you know, went on under the bed, but in this orientation, and then let you uh, screw the bed in the uh, with the extrusions in the correct place. But the problem with, was I didn't think about the clearance for the sex bolt Z limit switch, so I had to make a cutout around here to 
uh, make sure that doesn't interfere and I didn't do that so this aluminium plate wasn't usable another uh, result of using an aluminium plate like this would be to uh, I'd have to modify the sex bolt Z limit switch plastic housing to uh, increase its height up a little bit just to make sure the uh, top of the Z limit switch is in the exact same position so it still would require some modification to the parts anyway so yeah this is how I had to mount it basically but uh, functionally it shouldn't really matter so here is one of the things I'm doing that's not supplied with the DFH kit in here I have a mini 12864 display the one I used on my Voron 2.2 back in the day and nothing on 2.4 as well but but right now on the 2.4 I'm using a Raspberry Pi touch display so this was free so I decided to use my tw mini 12864 for the display for the Micron and uh, yeah I'll also need the ribbon cables for this which uh, actually you can see the mod I did for the ribbon cables back in the war on 2.2 days or 2.4 days again I don't remember uh, that was because the uh, orientation of these pins were different on the mini 12864 versus the SKR 1.3 so that is something you had to do to be able to mount a display on the front skirts you need to have the front skirts with the two holes in the center so the center hex the one that's filled with purple right now that's supposed to be uh, just supposed to have two holes for the display well uh, that's only an option with the single piece skirts because I have to print these on my Voron Zero I have to print these uh, print a two piece version and the, the two piece version doesn't have that so I designed this purple part to as it's just an insert basically that goes into the hex and has two screw holes that you can see on the back side here so it will let me mount the display so that's the idea that is one of the well, I already started designing custom parts for this printer, even though I still don't have the printer, so that should tell you something. I assembled the Fetus Dragonfly, as you can see, so it's the same uh, heater supplied with the DFH kit, but I used the PT100. Turns out I have two of these Triangle Lab PT100s lying around. I thought I had only one, but yeah, I have two, so use one of them here, and I have another one here for a... I don't know, maybe for an upcoming project or something like that, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's assembled and it's ready to be installed on the uh, Micron when I build it. I'm kind of shooting this out of order. Fuck. Sorry, I have to take a break. I stepped on my foot the wrong way. People with herniated discs will know what I'm talking about. I assembled the tool head for the Micron, so here it is. You can see the Voron logo here instead of the Micron logo. I'll get to why that is in a second, but yeah, here is the entire thing assembled, including the parts that uh, let you mount this to the uh, X-Axis. So we'll have to unscrew a few things to be able to mount this on the X-Axis. You can also see the band, uh, belt tensioning mechanism and the screw holes for the MGN 9C uh, carriage. So you just push the belt on the carriage. That's the tensioning mechanism. I don't know how well that will work, but I guess we will see. But uh, yeah, as I said, this is the this is the mini afterburner from the Voron Zero repository instead of the Micron repository, which is why this has the Voron logo, which is fine. This is essentially a Voron anyway, but the reason I had to print this is because the Dragonfly Hutton that's included with the kit from DFH. There is only a mount for, on the Micron repository for the Dragon Hutton. There isn't one for the Dragonfly or any other Hutton, so if you want to use anything but uh, Dragon, you either have to use the one from the War on Zero repository or, or an alternative tool head. You can see this tree magnet on the bottom side of the tool head. That is for the uh, Clicky Pro. It's a very cheap and effective uh, pad leveling sensor, but it's also a little more complicated to tune. So anyway, that's the one that is recommended by the Micron team, and that's why this is included. And I will use the Clicky Pro as well. But one thing to note is with the DFH kit, you don't get the uh, limit, uh, the micro switch that you need for the clicky with the kit, so you have to use an additional one. I have a f quite a few lying around anyway, so I'll use one of those. But uh, yeah, just an FYI, the kit comes with the bare minimum, and well, for the bare minimum, you don't actually have to level the bed. So yeah, I guess that's the idea. Anyway, I assembled the electronics assembly as you can see and I went with the stacked option. So if you don't know, there are two versions for the electronics. One is flat, one is stacked. Stacked is obviously more compact and it's also the only one that you can print on a small print pad like my Boron Zero. And uh, yeah, so you can see the layout. On the bottom you have the power supply and then the octopus. And on the top, upside down and with, with only two supports and 
uh, with the wrong screw type as well. Not a big fan of that, but uh, still should be fine. Is the Raspberry Pi 4, which I stole this from my Tiny M. Uh, the Tiny M, I'm going to buy a new Raspberry Pi when I can find one that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. But uh, for now, I'm just going to steal that. So this will run the uh, this will run Clipper. It will also run Octoprint. I'm not using main sales slash whatever else. Uh, I still want to use Octoprint. On the Octopus, you can see the seven TMC2209 drivers and the PT100 stick for the PT100 on the tool head uh, on the hot end. So uh, yeah, this is the assembly. This will go in obviously on the bottom side of the Micron once I mount the skirts and the Z drives. But as I said, for the Z drives, I'm waiting for some parts, so that won't be in this episode. I installed these titanium rail backers on my extrusions on the. Y extrusions here, both of them, and on the X extrusion as well. So what these do is, uh, in theory, because the rails, MGN 7 and 9 rails are steel, and the, because the profiles are extrusion uh, aluminium, they have a different uh, expansion multiplier. It's been a while since high school, but yeah, anyway, because of that, in theory, these aluminium extrusions tend to bend, and yeah, that, that is what these are designed to combat. They're, these were first designed for the Voron 2, and I already have some installed on my Voron 2, but uh, those are stainless steel. In this case, I went with titanium. So uh, yeah, I installed these on the extrusions. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is a nice modification to the printer. I don't... Uh, this is obviously adding some weight to the X and Y axes as well, or to the gantry assembly in general, but uh, I don't think it will matter. So. Yeah, I guess we will see these in action when I run the printer. And on the GitHub page for the 2020 extrusion Voron 2, Voron Triton rail backers, there's a more detailed explanation of these, so I'll link that in the description below in case you're interested in uh, more details about the theory behind this. And for the gantry parts, uh, you can see the tops of those here. I'm using the pins mod. I will also use the same for the AMB tensioners when they're printed as well. The point of this is uh, to allow for smoother motion. Uh, the diameter of the screws is also isn't exactly 3mm versus pins are not gonna be technically exactly 3mm but they are closer. Uh, also screws have threads, threads can wear the sides of the bearings and then the bearings can get stuck, at least in theory. This shouldn't really happen but because the bearings should be made of a harder metal but it can happen so this is also combating that. Uh, this requires different sets of 3D printed parts, so I printed these uh, versions, which is a mod available on the Micron repository by HardK, which is also the creator of the Micron, but I guess he decided to upload that as a separate mod. Um, so, yeah, if you want to use this, that's available on there. And the pins are available from the FH, I'll link them in the description below, along with the kit and everything else I talked about in this video. Yeah, that's the idea with this, and I can say that the motion feels very smooth, so... Uh, I have high hopes for this, but in a, I guess we will see it in action. I installed the Z-axis joints on the MGN7 rails for the Z-axis with the spherical bearings, the Ecos branded uh, spherical bearings in them as well. So you can see how they are supposed to work. They just you know, rotate like this. Kind of difficult to do with a finger with half the fingers not working. Yes, that injury is still affecting me. But yeah, anyway, I assembled that. So this is ready for the gantry. But uh, that will have to wait for the next episode along with the Z drives because for the Z drives I'm still waiting for parts and the gantry I'm still waiting for parts to be 3D printed. I was going to end the video there but I made a bit more progress. I assembled uh, part of the gantry so the uh, Y extrusions and the extrusion in the back is now in place and also the dock is in now in place. I need to reprint the entire uh, drag chain and actually I'm I think I'm just going to use uh, I wanted to use the 3d printable drag chain just to do the kit as a kit like uh, the way it was intended but I'm just going to use the off, uh, off the shelf 10 by 11 drag chain I have and just custom design some mounts for it on the, for the micron so that'll be my drag chain the, the it's obviously it's not a secret that I still have some print quality problems on my Voron Zero and I still have to figure that out and uh, yeah I'm sure you've noticed some uh, ugly prints in this video already so uh, yeah the drag chains because they're kind of need to be precise they didn't really work well but uh, other than that you can also see that I assembled the 
uh, front idlers as well with the uh, five, uh, three millimeter pin in them. These were the most difficult ones to assemble because uh, even with the screw, these are kind of difficult to assemble. At least on a war on two, I don't have have first time assembling a micron, obviously. But uh, even with that case, it's kind of difficult to assemble. But you can use a extra screw as a guide on that. But because the pins not only has a, a hole on this side, but doesn't have a hole on this side. You can't really do the screw trick as a guide so you really have to position two bearings two washers inside and at the same time push the pin in which obviously there is some resistance on the pin as well that's uh, by design so yeah th that was the most difficult part to assemble but it is assembled now so um yeah that is now actually it for this video in the next video we will finish assembling the printer and we will do our first test prints at least that's the goal i'm still waiting for some parts i ordered the pouch 64 teeth pulleys for the z drives you can obviously 3d print those and the scls for that are included in the micron repository and the 16 tooth idlers that you need for those are included with the kit but i decided to use metal ones i do prefer metal ones especially considering the print quality problems i have with my war on zero at the moment it just makes more sense to use metal ones you can also use 62 flanged uh, standard please if you're interested in that and uh, you need a custom z drive i think but that is definitely possible but i want to keep to the 64 teeth uh, original 64 teeth count so i need the pouch ones that are sold and i'll link them in the description below in case you're interested I think those were originally designed for a, a Mobius extruder of some kind, but uh, it's the exact same teeth cow, so it is perfect for this build. I'm also working on a lot of mod ideas already, as you know, that's kind of what I do on this channel, so stay tuned for that. But that's it for this episode, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like down below and stay tuned for the next episode, and thanks for watching.